The Japanese were raiding Darwin for the third time in 10 days. I was flying one of the squadron's 452's replacement Spitfires, the Mark 5C A58 II. It wasn't long before I realised I had problems. The aeroplane lacked power. After we reached 20,000 feet, the problem became rapidly worse and holding my position in formation required nearly full throttle. The engine temperature was soon above normal and I began to fall back. It was then I noticed the difference in my exhausts. While the left side was normal, the right bank began trailing a plume of white vapour. I realised my aeroplane would not last long and might not get me home. I scanned the sky for fighters, none above and none behind. There were two at five o'clock, about half a mile away and 2,000 feet below. We were in a perfect position to attack. But if my engine seized while tangling with the zeros, I could easily be caught. I had a choice to make. Stay with the action or bail out. I decided to attack. We had to destroy the bombers before they reached their target. I started my dive to attack the bomber on the left-hand end of the formation. Using both cannon and machine guns together, I kept firing until very close, then broke away. Though I could not see the result, the attack was good, and I was certain I had it destroyed. The engine and cockpit were now intensely hot. It was time to get out. I pressed the air sea rescue button and called Mayday, 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 Duncan calling, bailing out. The Mark 5C had a solid black rubber ball to jettison the canopy, but to my complete horror, it came away in my hand. I tried to release the canopy by using the normal pulling lugs. I was diving at around 300 miles per hour. I realised then that I had a battle on my hands. A red hot engine, a stuck canopy, and the possibility of one or more zeros following me. Grabbing the pinch bar, I tried to lever the canopy back, but there was nothing to get a purchase on. Suddenly, there was flame and black smoke coming from joints in the cowling. Then pieces of cowling ripped off and hit the windscreen. A tongue of flame suddenly came up from under the rudder bar. This meant flame had come through the firewall and up under the petrol tanks, which was still more than half full. I panicked and beat at the perspex with my clenched fists. I crossed my arms and struck upwards and outwards with my elbows with all my strength. Something gave under my left elbow. I had succeeded in knocking the canopy out a couple of inches. By now, I would have been diving in excess of 300 miles per hour, and the wind instantly ripped the canopy off. At the same time, cockpit filled with flames. I wrenched myself out. I tumbled slowly over and over. I knew I had to do a delayed drop to avoid being shot. Finally, at 15,000 feet, I opened the parachute. I knew I was lucky to be alive.